Yo, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna show you how to become absolute world class at defending. Now, in order to make this video, I, well, did a logical error for a couple of weeks. Actually, for two weeks. I wanted to find a game where I get pushed back to the last objective. So we basically get a very close win with our defense. And then I saw, wait, I played like, you know, 50 games in two weeks and I hadn't had a single instance where that happened. And I thought, wait, uh, why is it so? Oh, because if you're defending very well, you don't get pushed back. So yeah, now finally, after figuring this conundrum out, here you have a perfect display of an extremely good defense. And here you're going to see everything that you need to know. Now this game is really perfect. It shows you all the details. And I'm going to comment the game in the background while the game goes and you're going to see literally everything there is to see. So the most important thing to know is that you have infinite lives as a defender. So you have a theoretically infinite resource. Now isn't that unfair? Well, no it ain't because you don't really have infinite lives because you only have as many lives as you can spawn. So in order to to use this resource, you need to have as many ready points as possible, preferably, as you can see here, surrounding the objective. By the way, very nice golden underground here. The sand looks amazing. This is possibly the best map in the Pacific. You see here, we have a rally point here by a teammate, a rally point here by a teammate, and a rally point here by myself, and two natural spawns. This is already great. You see, okay, we already have basically enough ready points to defend. You, if you have three ready points, you will you win almost always as a defender because because attackers will need four to five ready points to reliably defeat you, and basically no team has that <laughs> because most enlisted players still don't get again understand the game. So yeah, this this already looks amazing. Now the first thing you do is you look at the map to figure out what what is the general situation. First of all, you draw a line from the attackers to the objective. You see, this is the central line. So this is where most people are going to come from. And with some map knowledge, you will know that they will also spread out here and here. Well, this is normal since attackers always go left and right. And as a defender, you want to adapt your strategy perfectly to what the enemy is doing. Because if you ignore what the enemy is doing, well, <laughs> if he does something very good, you will lose. Yeah. So you always have to adapt. And here we'll see this is an open beach, so there won't be ready points in here because they will instantly be visible and instantly get destroyed, or even worse, you will just always kill the people who spawn there from far away. So no one is going to build a ready point here, and if he does, it doesn't survive for long. So they will start accumulating here across the hills, downhill, where they have a bit protection, and here on the uphill side. So you can assume you control this right area. So we can already start encroaching around here and build ready points here. And we have this right side as our main domain to control and to look deep into the enemy lines. And the enemies all only have this hill here as an advantage where they can go downhill and possibly start uh, doing their shenanigans. But besides that, it's, it's quite fair. We have the right side, they have the left side. So both people, have, both players, both teams have advantages. And yeah, let's go on. Now I built a ready point here, obviously. And then I built a machine gun. And obviously to use this open field. And if enemies dare to just run across the open field, well, guess what? They're going to get shot. This is the first thing. Now I really like to start with engineers because A, it's fun. And B, whatever I do, even if I get killed, the stuff that I built is still left for my teammates to use. So... It, it stays for the rest of the game, unless it gets destroyed. And you should always know where the tanks are coming from. And make sure the enemies don't run you over with their tanks. Because taking out the enemy vehicles already defeats a large part of the enemy's attack power. So I'm building a tank in here to look through exactly where the enemies are coming from. And you see, perfect timing. The, en <laughs> the amphibious big booty tank is wobbling around. And he won't survive that. And he can be lucky our Japanese cannon is quite weak because, yeah, uh, he already takes more shots than I expect. But he should die. All right, he's dead. Easy. Now someone molotov us. And we're lucky I didn't start burning. Now I got shot finally. 
All right, now, so far, so good. Now, let's take a look at the situation. I can't see my rally point for some reason. This means either it got blown up, which is likely because I, it was close to me, or someone spawned here and it became gray. Sometimes you don't see them. Right now, I don't see it. This is a mystic, it happens. But all right. Another good thing is, once st things start burning, even if you're completely new to the game and you don't know the map, Looking at these burning areas really helps you a lot in in identifying where you currently are. So yeah, you see right side open beach, left side hill where the enemies are coming from, and here are usually their ready points on the hill. They start running downhill and attacking us, and here's our objective which is completely closed. There's a thin line around the objective and you can stay inside, but usually don't survive, so you have to get inside. All right. Now, make sure you always artillery strike, because artillery strikes are one of the best ways to, well, either if the objective is open, kill everyone who tries to occupy it, or if it's closed, just artillery strike between you and the enemies, or where you expect enemies to be in large numbers. Now, here right now, we repel the first enemy attack. And now comes the big decision. What do you do now? Do you, well, you can do two smart things. You can either counter attack, or you can start fortifying the objective. Or you can, as many people do, just do nothing for some reasons. Well, that's also an option. So yeah, I preferred here counter-attacking because, well, I felt like to. I guess, like, I already built some... Ah, yeah, right, in the beginning, I built some barbed wire in the objective, and then I saw another teammate building lots of more barbed wire, so I don't need to fortify anything else. So what can you do else? Well, you want to push forward. Now, why do you want to do that? Very simple. Every second the enemy isn't on the objective, you have actually free time to do stuff you want to do. Now, if you fortify the objective, it becomes much harder and, and slower for the enemies to capture. But since you are, this is already a great investment, because the longer time, the more time you have to fortify, the worse it gets for the enemy. So you're literally punishing him for every single second he wastes. Or you start counter-attacking. Now, if you counter-attack, you can get two big advantages. A, you, uh, you postpone, you push the front line back to the enemy, as I do right now here. And I see no one here, no ready points at all, nothing. And this way, if the enemy starts attacking, well, he can only attack me. He can't attack the ready point. <laughs> and if I had another squad with me, or more teammates, the front line would literally be here now. Because they, well, they can't get closer to the objective before they kill us. So, if you do this, you can just start pushing back the front line. And we see here already, we have, well, successfully pushed them back. The lie, the kill rate is quite similar. Now, this is already an advantage for us. Because since we have more lives than them, and depending on the rally points, we also spawn more lives. If we have the same kill rate, they are bleeding out. We don't care about it. And the second thing to look at is the engineer points. One, two, three people building engineer points. So we have maximum three ready points. And here, one, two, three, two. Well, they need, to, they need two more people to reliably defeat us, as I already said. So this looks bad for them. Right now, I would, I would say 90% win rate for our team. All right, so... This already looks okay. By the way, if, if two enemies start building more rally points, it instantly switches to their favor. <laughs> but they just don't do it right now, at least. All right, what they do instead? Well, they start flanking us. Oh, now this is smart. They see the last squad I had was on the left side, and I completely pushed them back. Now, this means either two things. A, they are completely all behind. Or, if no one is on the left, they must be on the right. <laughs> and this is exactly what happened. They are coming from the hard, from the right side really hard now, and they actually got into the objective. So, what are we gonna do? Well, since it's a closed objective, let's grenade them. Like, they can't survive. Like, just throw all the grenades you have, all the grenades you have, and preferably also know where they can hide, because if there are spots where which you don't know, it can be actually the case that one person just kills squad after squad because he's hiding somewhere, then no one sees him. Now here, if I had an engineer, I would instantly rebuild the barbed wire in front of the window, so enemies can't get inside, but I don't have one, so I just drop a mine and keep pushing outside again. And now here, the, the attack on the right side weakened off, but now they're coming from the left side. 
So yeah, we need to stop this. Another important thing to do is, if you are a good player, just try to kill all the tanks, because many people apparently have a hard time with enemy vehicles. So, yeah, you can see throughout this game, I killed almost all the vehicles the enemy sent. Because my teammates weren't really that fast or eager to destroy them. And here you see the punishment for bad teams. Well, <laughs> I couldn't spawn on the quickly on the on the objective because I d we don't have enough ready points. So obviously, I quickly need to build a new ready point. Exactly what I'm gonna do. As a defender, as a defender, if you have many rally points, 70 meters is already enough. If you don't have many, uh, prefer to get close ones. If they are close, obviously they're gonna get destroyed by artillery strike with a like li higher likelihood. But well, that happens. Now I didn't build a rally point for some reason. Maybe my mine is still up. But yeah, okay. Now here we see: Are there any issues right now going on? Not really. Most people have a problem understanding what's important and what not. Not only in enlisted, also in general life. So unless the enemies are capturing, there's no reason at all to actually start panicking and start start well trying to defend because there's no one to defend against so here we see again i i just wanted to t take care of this vehicle because this vehicle was so close he could start killing us either in the objective or while we are trying to get close to the objective from our spawn to the to, to the objective so this vehicle had to go we couldn't ignore him. He was the, the by far most important and only important thing going on. Now since this vehicle is dealt with, I'm gonna build some sandbags. The one sandbag there was to protect us from machine gun fire. Because this is a wooden house so machine guns can easily shoot through the walls. And obviously now barbed wire so they can't jump in. Now they can of course but it's gonna cost them more than 5 seconds. And 5 seconds is enough to kill a whole squad. So one barbed wire has an extreme high effect. And these sandbags are there in the center of the of the objective, like a rib cage, are there to protect you from flamethrowers and from molotovs and a little bit from phosphor grenades and fragmentation grenades. Now these are really important because one big flamethrower push can completely destroy 20 soldiers. So you absolutely have to be very careful about flamethrowers, since they are literally the strongest weapon in the game. There nothing else can change a battle like flamethrowers. So most of the time they are not really strongly used, but if if if, an, if a team gets a strong flamethrower attack, even one single attack, with 15 to 20 kills, the whole battle changes, so yeah. You always have to be careful about them, so you want to be safe, and building a bunch of sandbags which stop the flame is just the easiest way to do. Now you see I can artillery strike again, so we need to do that obviously. And we really need a new rally point. Because it's the second or third time I already spawned back there, <laughs> and it's getting annoying. Now, yeah, let's go. I think I didn't build the rally points on the right side, because I saw enemies coming from the right constantly. And I just uh, couldn't build it there new. And here on the left, well, guess what, yeah, finally we, we can build a new one. Sometimes it can be hard to find a good spot. This may be... On purpose or this may be just an error by Gaijin you never know but here we finally found one and we see the artillery strike doing its work and it even killed a random anti-air gun and now you see why I built sandbags around the rally points because well <laughs> a rally point wouldn't have ex survived this explosion if it, if it happens too often especially not a newly spawned squad so yeah you need to give them some defense for those people who think well but then everyone sees there's a rally point and so what like in real games, it's not a really issue. Does he want to run to the gray zone to kill a rally point? I don't think so. <laughs> if he does, he, he's gonna get killed on the way there. So this is in most cases no issue. The risk reward distribution is highly in favor of building sandbags around your rally point. All right, you see enemies running around the right side. So the flow of the battle right now is clearly in a way that the enemies control the right and we control the left and center. Though the enemies keep pushing. Now, one could start despairing and say, oh no, they have surrounded us. They are on the right side and they are on the left side too. And they have tanks in the center of the map. Oh no, we're gonna lose. Well, we killed already 800 of them. So, this, is, this isn't even an issue. This is just a thing that they 
had so many attacks that by chance inevitably you're gonna succeed at some point in time so this is completely okay it's not about completely crushing them it's about grinding them down with every single the longer the game goes on and here we grinded it down really effectively if they capture now it's completely okay because they barely have any lives left so we did everything right only thing i would have liked to do is drop more anti tank mines on the left side on the main road and maybe some anti tank mines on the right uh, I didn't have time for that since they controlled the left or right and right for a long time. But yeah, besides that, we did very good work. And you see, enemies are dying really quickly. My anti tank gun is even alive, so can I destroy this tank? Let's see. Can I? Can I? Can I? And nope, uh, I can't. <laughs> now that's sad. All right, let's readjust it. And no, still not. Let's get closer then. How about now? Oh, bad luck. Well, happens. This is annoying. And as a double punishment, we also are going to get flooded by these two squads. They're in the background. <laughs> yeah. So, well, time for some general strategy. Now, for those who think that... that Well, it's those who still think that it's, it's unfair that defenders have infinite lives. Let's put it this way. In, in a game with 10 perfect players against 10 perfect players... The defenders would win almost always, as long as the map is balanced. So this is already a bad sign. But you basically never have the situation in, in listed games. I would say 95% of all games, the, the team quality, the player quality is so average overall that this isn't a factor. That both teams have this basically the same chance of winning. This means for you now... If you are the one, even if you are just one person making a difference, you can completely make a difference and make sure that your team wins. Being just being the one player who builds ready points already changes everything. So literally, this is the biggest contribution you can do to a team if you just build enough ready points. Now here, the enemies threw us back to the next objective. Now what am I doing? First of all, I'm preparing it. A, I built barbed wire in front of the windows, so enemies can't rush us. I built a tank blocker so we can't get shot by enemy tanks and enemy grenades and enemy grenade launchers and all the bad things. And we even have time to build ammo boxes and a random machine gun nest and to drop mines. Now, the biggest decision after being thrown back an objective is the following. A, are you gonna spawn back and start preparing the objective like I did? Or, and this is something that many people don't know, you, for a couple of seconds after you lost the objective, can still spawn on the old objective or around the old objective, if you have ready points there. Now, this is one of the biggest advantage defenders have, because what can you do by that? Well, you spawn there with your most aggressive squad and just start counter-attacking enemies. And it literally doesn't matter if you kill two enemies and lose seven soldiers. So, since you have infinite lives, the fact that you spawn there which was basically for free, <laughs> you still grinded the enemies down and you slow them down. Because it's not only about losing soldiers, it's also about being slower. And if you killed an engineer, even better, because then it means that they can't build a ready point very likely. So this is extremely effective, just spawning there and just throwing, throwing your soldiers at the enemies, because you literally can do the Stalin tactic and just throw away your li soldiers' lives. Well, since these aren't real humans in the game, it's completely okay, actually. So, yeah. And here I'm doing something similar. I just, well, I just go to them. Since <laughs> they're not attacking us, I just get closer to them and start to, well, start pestering them with my random shooting there. Usually, right now, they can either come from the right side and build ready points on the right. That's why I'm checking the right side now. Or they can come from the left side, which my team is, obviously. You can see the white dots on the hill. Or they can come straight from the, through the center, which some smart teammate blocked with an anti... with a tank blocker. So you see this already. We have some really smart players who know what to do. This one tank blocker is already too much for a normal tank. Because he literally can't get around. Uh, and the best thing you can do, by the way, is don't put it in the center, so you completely block the road. Put it slightly to the left or right, and then next to it, place an anti tank mine. And then you have basically a 100% perfect trap for the enemy tanks. Yeah, so now what if this fails? 
What if the enemies, perfectly after they captured uh, your first objective, like 5 or 10 seconds afterwards are already on the new objective? Now this happens sometimes, and this is one of the worst feelings ever, I know that. Now what happened there? Was he teleporting or cheating? Nope. I recommend highly watching my how to attack video, where I explain how to do that, because this is one of the strongest things you can do. By the way, this is completely beautiful how he built rows of tank blockers everywhere. What, what happened is that some enemy started rushing towards the new objective before he captured the old objective. So, like, one soldier, one squad of soldiers started pushing towards the new objective, while the rest of his team was still capturing, and so by this trick, he already was on the new objective before the last objective was captured. And this is how you get these fast pushes. Now these fast pushes are dangerous if the defenders are sleeping and start freaking out, which most people do and start bitching and crying. But <laughs> this is <laughs> if you want to feel like you're in a real war, if you're about historical accuracy, you have to behave like a historically accurate soldier who doesn't lose his nerves and instead analyze the situation. Because the conclusion, conclusion you will come to is that there can't be many soldiers succeeding in that. And out of experience, whenever something like that happens, it's due to all only like one or two soldiers actually surviving. Yeah, it's like usually if something like that happens, what happened is that one squad started pushing and one, two, three soldiers arrived at the objective. So when you see a fast capture, all you need to do is just spawn a squad and run quickly to the objective and you instantly stop it. Because there won't be many soldiers from the enemy side there. This is the very simple counter strategy. Just spawn a squad and rush on the objective. Don't even necessarily try to kill him, because very often they start hiding. And if they're hiding, they, they can't shoot you most of the time. Only if you start searching for them, since they will hide in a good position, <laughs> you will expose yourself. So just keep the majority, make sure you have the majority, and only then stop searching for these random soldiers. So you don't, because the worst thing you can do is, they have three soldiers hiding, and you come with a squad of like, let's say, six soldiers, and you're going to the objective, you're searching for him, obviously he's hiding in a way that he's going to get the first shots, and he kills you and then starts killing your bots and your whole squad is dead. And then they keep on capturing because the objective is empty again. So don't do this, just keep the majority, wait for more teammates, and then start searching for the random enemies. Because if you avoid this one mistake, you already save, you already give your team lots of additional time to defend. Now, regarding time management, here's the, here's the big secret people don't understand. You have only infinite lives, if you can actually spawn. So you need spawning windows, time windows where you spawn. But you only get these time windows for as long as you control the objectives. So once, so every time an enemy captures your objectives, you actually have less time in the game to spawn lives. This is the first disadvantage. The second disadvantage is that usually objectives are made in a way that if the enemies attack in a coordinated way, they are gonna over overwhelm you. They are gonna overwhelm you. Especially since since you, well, enemies can attack theoretically through every side. Now, you don't really know usually where they will be attacking from. So if enemies start getting smart and focus their powers and concentrate their attacks, even just three people playing, three players playing together and focusing on one push can be enough to overcome defenders. And the last disadvantage of defenders that makes the whole thing fair is that, let's say we were 20 soldiers, like 3 squads, 20 soldiers in the objective, sitting on the objective and waiting. Now an enemy can just take one grenade launcher and, <laughs> and start grenade launching into the building and 15 of us will be dead after 10 seconds. You see, this is what only what... Only attackers can really do that. We as defenders, well, we have to run around and search for attackers. Well, you see, we can't really do these tricks. So, killing large amounts of enemies is easier for attackers usually than for defenders. So this is what balances it out: that the fact that the fact that you have virtually infinite lives is getting counterbalanced by that. 
So yeah, it's not actually infinite lives. So your strategy is to gain as much time as possible as a defender. Now, how do you do that? Well, you want to slow the enemies down, obviously. Now, in order to slow them down, I can summarize for you. You want to build engineer structures, build barbed wire to, to make literally either impossible to access areas or to make it very slow and painfully for enemies to access areas. Build tank blockers to block doors. Not really block tanks. I rarely block tanks. Basically never. <laughs> I almost always just block doors for infantry. They still can jump over them or crawl under them, but guess what? If you are under fire and you start crawling, your whole squad dies within two seconds. Or if someone throws a good molotov, you also die. And this brings us to the grenades. Well, you want to use grenades, though they are not as effective, once again, because attackers will be usually spread out. So the best grenades to use are molotovs to throw behind your objective so enemies well, can't get through this area that's burning on your objective. Or use flamethrowers to burn down or to just ignite the, the ground or ignite the doorway so enemies can't get through there. You could also just build a tank blocker and ignite it. And then everyone who tries to, to get close to it just gonna start burning. So this is another good application of, of tank blockers since they will also start burning and you have basically an amplification effect for your flamethrowers. Fossil grenades, which will come to all campaigns in the next weeks, are also gonna be great uh, uh, for this reason. Now, you also want to, well, as we saw, you also want not only to slow down passively, but actively. Actively means pushing back into the enemy heartland, which we saw, but also flanking. Now, why flanking? Very similar, simple. You saw here that I've, I basically perfectly adapted to the enemies, and whenever they basically sent an object, sent a vehicle, I instantly attacked it. This is what I was mostly occupied with. So I couldn't really defend the flanks. And they took the chance and took the opening in our defense, since my team didn't really defend that well in this regard, and started flanking us. Now you want to avoid this as a defender, of course, and you do this by, well, flanking yourself. So go to the left and go to the right side and just search for enemy ready points. At destroying enemy ready points is most of the time only possible for defenders. Because look where our ready points are, they're in the gray zone, so enemies can't really get close. But their ready points are gonna be, well, if they're good ready points, quite close to our objective, so we can perfectly destroy them. And building a ready point, even if you, if the enemies have good players, still you often slows you down really hard, and it also is quite risky. So oftentimes you lose half of your squad just because you committed to build a ready point. So if you as a defender blow it up, it's an extremely powerful move from your side. Yeah, an extremely powerful move from your side. Also, if you you not, you not only want to like passively find ready points, you want to actively destroy the enemies by by just well. If you see, all right, we can push on one flank. Well, let's use that. You can start building offensive ready points there, so you can always spawn there and instantly attack the enemies after they spawned. And you can just control whole sides and whole flanks. Here we didn't really do it, but we had three ready points most of the time. So we had good defensive spawn pressure. And I was basically always, whenever things started getting bad, I instantly ran to the objective. And another good thing, we avoided the mistake of having too many people inside the objective. Because then you, if it's an open objective, gonna get bombed and artillery strike. Or if it's a closed objective, you're going to get grenaded <laughs> and grenade launched and flame fraud. And we avoided this. So yeah, this is another big thing. You want to see, you want to understand attacker strategy perfectly and to basically see what are the best moves they can do and to make them possible. This is literally like chess. Literally like chess. You see what can I do the best and you do it. And you avoid weaknesses from your side. And then you see what can the enemy do the best and you want to, well, make it impossible for him to do that and to use it. And then you try to force him to be weak and apply strategies that make him weak. And here, since they didn't really push through successfully with one big attack, they trickle down slowly, constantly, which is, the, which is basically a death sentence for attackers, because slowly trickling down means we constantly kill every single wave they send, 
and they just lose lives. And they just lose so many lives without really capturing that they're going to lose the game. Alright, now the last thing you need to know is to be very adaptive. Adaptive means when the enemy changes his strategy or when you see your strategy doesn't work, adapt. For example, once my ready point on the right side got destroyed, I knew, alright, it doesn't make sense to build a new one there. I'm just gonna waste my squad, I'm gonna die. Worst thing is they're gonna wait for a team to spawn there and just kill it. And so I avoided building ready points on the right and I started building ready points on the left and more to the back side in the center. So this is the first adaption. Another adaption would have been if the enemies completely pushed from the left side, well then I, <laughs> then I would have gone more to the right, built more ready points on the right so they can't spawn kill us on the left and push this way. Yeah, So always adapt to the enemies and look what he's doing. If for example an enemy has built a, has built a sniper position or has a grey zone tank that's shooting into your spawn area and spawn killing you, obviously build a new ready point. So you don't, your teammates don't spawn anymore on this side. Yeah. So yeah, also tank racks are perfect hiding positions for either ready points, though I wouldn't build one here, it's literally the center of the map, but you can build ammo boxes there, you, you can build a bunch of, you can hide soldiers there, you can build a bunch of sandbags left and right and just have a nice position. By the way, if you if you're defending, you really want to have, well, something to hide behind, so you're not in the open field, because the attackers must be in the open field so you can shoot them. This is one of the other big advantages of being a defender. Now, if you don't have something like that, just do the following. Build, uh, build two tank blockers next to each other, facing the enemy, and now you can hide perfectly behind them. You are, uh, like, 90% of your body is going to be hidden behind the tank blockers, or behind one tank blocker even. But you can still perfectly shoot, and only like 10% of your shooting area is going to be hidden. So you have a big advantage. And now do the following. Behind these, not in front, but behind, so closer to your, sp your spawn area, tank blockers, build a sandbag. So you, whenever an enemy starts flaming, or just throwing random molotovs or similar stuff, or fragmentation grenades, can always jump behind the sandbag. This way you are... This way you are protected by enemy projectiles, even by enemy enemy tank attacks, but with these tank blockers, because tank, tank blockers usually survive most cannon shots. And whatever the tank blockers don't defend you against, you can hide behind the sandbag. And the sandbag itself is protected by the two tank blockers. So this is a very, very potent defense mechanism. Yeah. So, for example, here we built one tank blocker, obviously to block both doors, by the way. As you can see, it blocks both doors. If I built one more to the left, and then the sandbag behind, we would have basically exactly the same thing that we need and want. Alright, that was it. Now you need, now you know, basically all you need to know to defend as good as it gets in Enlisted. And just applying 50% of what you just heard will put you into the best 1% of all players. Seriously, because... Most players really are brain dead and, <laughs> and they just don't think while playing. And yeah, just use it and you're gonna be very happy about it. I'm gonna release very soon another video about how to defend where we see what happens when things go wrong. So you can see how to behave under stress because, well, under stress making everything right is harder than when everything goes easy. So if you think you learned something, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And share this video with your nerd friends. So our nerd army grows. And see you next time. Goodbye.